हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अंकित गोयल कंसल्टेंट साइकाइट्रिस्ट एंड फैकल्टी फॉर साइकाइट्री टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यू ड्रग्स एसोसिएटेड विद साइकाइट्री विल लर्न सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज ड्रग विच इज रेलिवेंट फॉर द अपकमिंग एग्जाम्स ना लेट अस बिगिन द फर्स्ट सेट ऑफ ड्रग्स एंड द फर्स्ट ड्रग इन दिस विल डिस्कस इज ल्यूमैटोपेरॉन ना ल्यूमैटोपेरॉन is a drug which has been recently approved for treatment of schizophrenia in adults it is a unique drug because it has unique mechanism of action as it simultaneously modulates serotonin dopamine and glutamate neurotransmission so the mechanism of action includes it is 5ht2a antagonist it is d2 presynaptic partial agonist and postsynaptic antagonist and d1 dependent modulator of glutamate it is also a serotonin reuptake inhibitor it is given as oral drug and generally is once daily medication important adverse effects associated with it are somnolence or sedation which is the most common adverse effect seen and another is dry mouth so these were the important points about lumatoperon now the second drug in this category we will discuss is keriprazine now keriprazine is although not a new drug as it has been previously been approved for schizophrenia and bipolar disorder manic or mixed episode but it has recently been approved also for bipolar depression so these are the three indications for which now keriprazine has been approved bipolar depression being the latest condition in which it has been approved the mechanism of action of keriprazine is that it is a partial agonist of d3 and d2 more d3 than d2 as well as 5ht1a again it is a oral medication and given as once daily medication the third important drug which we are going to discuss is pima vanserin now it is the first drug in the category for which it is approved that is it is the first drug which has been approved for hallucination and delusion in parkinson's disease so an important mcq so it's a first drug which has been approved for this condition now we know that generally the second generation antipsychotics carry a boxed warning for psychosis in elderly patient with dementia because of cardiovascular risk so it becomes important that we now have one drug which has been approved for this condition the mechanism of action of pimavanserine is that it is 5ht2a inverse agonist which can be remembered from the name itself so it is from the name it is serotonin inverse agonist so it is a serotonin inverse agonist as well as you can remember there are two a's in the name so there are two a's in the name so it is a 5ht2a inverse agonist now important adverse effects associated with pimavanserine include it causes peripheral edema nausea confusional state constipation also very very important to remember that it increases qt interval so one has to be careful if there is a drug which also prolongs qt interval or if there is a condition which may increase qt interval so it has to be then given cautiously so these are the three important drugs or the antipsychotics which have been approved recently now the next drug which we are going to discuss is valbenazine Now, valbenazine is the first drug which has been approved for tardive dyskinesia. So, it's the first drug which has been approved for this condition. Now, tardive dyskinesia, as we know, it is a type of extra pyramidal side effect associated with antipsychotic drugs, and valbenazine is a drug approved for this condition. Now, what is the mechanism of action? Again, important. Now, valbenazine is a reversible inhibitor of vesicular monoamine transporter 2 or vmat2 now if we see what does vmat do now vmat2 is located presynaptically and it facilitates the release of dopamine in the synaptic cleft now so this dopamine again is sent back to the presynaptic 
region by the dopamine transporter where where there is the degradation by monoamine oxidase now what happens with valbenazine so valbenazine inhibits this vmat2 so there is decrease of release of dopamine in the synaptic cleft subsequently because of which there is improvement in tardive dyskinesia now because we know that tardive dyskinesia is because of d2 receptor hypersensitivity so it is because of d2 receptor hypersensitivity that is there is increase in the dopamine receptor post synaptically so what does valbenazine do is valbenazine decreases the dopamine and subsequently leads to improvement in tardive dyskinesia now what are the important adverse effects associated with valbenazine so it causes somnolence it also causes anticholinergic side effects like blurring of vision urinary retention dry mouth there are also problems in balance so there are great gait abnormalities and there are also gi side effects like nausea vomiting again important that it also increases qt interval so again precaution has to be taken when any drug is given along with it which also increases qt interval or there is any condition associated with qt prolongation so these were important points about valbenazine so let us discuss the next group of drugs so the two drugs which we are going to discuss now are related with treatment of depression so the first drug is s ketamine from the name you can remember it is s enantiomer of ketamine now it has been approved for treatment of treatment resistant depression in conjunction important in conjunction with the oral antidepressant so it is not approved as a monotherapy it has been approved in conjunction with the oral antidepressant of depression which is not showing with other antidepressants so this is the important indication now very important point to remember is the root now it has used as a nasal spray so very very important that it has used as a nasal spray and the mechanism of action as with ketamine is that it is a nmda antagonist so this is the mechanism of action now the adverse effects associated with ketamine include dissociation dizziness nausea sedation these are the common adverse effects see now important are the boxed warnings which are given with ketamine so these are important important adverse effects which one have to be careful with especially the first two that is risk of sedation and dissociation that is difficulty in attention judgment and thinking so because of these adverse effect person who has been given ketamine or person who has been given s ketamine has to be monitored for at least 2 hours after the drug has been given and also the person is told not to drive or use any heavy machinery for the rest of the day because of risk of sedation and dissociation other boxed warnings of ketamine is the abuse and suicidal thoughts and behavior so these are important points about s ketamine now the next drug is brexanolone now again a very important drug because it has been approved or it is the first drug which is approved for this indication which is postpartum depression depression associated with childbirth so this is the first drug which is approved for this indication now again very important just like s ketamine the route was different it was nasal spray as nasal spray it was used now brexanolone is given as iv infusion so it is given as a continuous iv infusion over a total 60 hours duration now the mechanism of action now it is identical to the endogenous allopregnanolone so it is identical to the endogenous allopregnanolone so from the name you can remember so it is identical to this molecule which is present inside our body and very important to remember that it is a positive allosteric modulator of gaba a receptor so it modulates positively modulates gaba a receptor which is the important mechanism of action so very very important to remember so the iv infusion 
as well as the mechanism of action now there are some important adverse effects that it causes sleepiness dry mouth loss of consciousness and flushing now very very two important adverse effect that is sleepiness as well as loss of consciousness so since we are giving a continuous iv infusion and importantly because of these side effects we have to monitor the patient so we have to monitor the patient when the infusion is given because of these very important adverse effects so we generally monitor by pulse oximeter so these are the important points about brixanolone now the next drug which we are going to discuss is lamborexin now this drug has been approved for treatment of insomnia with difficulty with sleep onset or sleep maintenance the mechanism of action of this drug as from the name we can derive that it is a orexin antagonist so it is a orexin receptor 1 and 2 antagonist now normally orexin promotes wakefulness so when we are antagonizing it it causes sedation now important adverse effects associated with it include somnolence which is the most common adverse effect in nightmares a drug which has been of similar mechanism of action previously approved is suvorexin the next drug which we will discuss is solriamfetol <coughs> solriamfetol has been approved for excessive daytime sleepiness so it has been approved for excessive daytime sleepiness in patients with narcolepsy and obstructive sleep apnea so it basically promotes person to be awake the mechanism of action is that it is a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor or it is a ndri now this is the so at the first so this is the first drug which which of this mechanism of action that is a ndri which has been approved for this indication so it's the first drug now the adverse effects include headache headache which is the most common adverse effect then it can cause nausea decrease appetite as well as anxiety and it is given as a oral route now the next or the last drug which we are going to discuss is pitolisent now it has been approved for again it has been approved for excessive daytime sleepiness in patients with narcolepsy again it has a unique mechanism of action as it is a histamine receptor h3 antagonist and inverse antagonist inverse agonist and the route of administration is oral route if you like our video you can like and subscribe our channel for more such videos in the future